Hello class, welcome to our next distance learning. So if you have not copied this down yet, make sure that you pause the video, copy it down. Um, while you're copying, I'm just gonna let you know a quick thing. Um, and also make sure that you do the word of the day thing also, just a thing right there. Why did I choose? Bi Lu. Um, yeah, so if you are interested in seeing these videos quicker, um, there's actually a playback feature on YouTube that you just click, I think, on the the settings, and then you can um, play them quicker. Like, you can speed them up if you can understand me that quickly. Um, it's just a lot of people need me to speak a bit slower, so not super, super fast. So I am not speaking super fast during this. But if you would like it to go faster, then feel free to do that. And again, just highlighting office hours, 1 to 2 p.m. every single day. If you have any questions or need any help, feel free to stop by. Okay, so now I'm assuming that you've done the word of the day and that you've copied down everything. Okay, so, bi lu, rate or ratio. So, you might have noticed maybe because similar triangles we're looking at similar triangles. So if we look at this, for example, line, line. Let's say maybe the bigger line is two times bigger than the first line. So that means they're at a one to two ratio or rate of times two. So maybe that's why I chose um, this, this word, bi lu. So again, those are just things that you might want to Think about why did I choose these? So I choose a word of the day because I want you to think. So please make sure that you're taking a guess on that. I'm gonna be checking for those when I check for your work. Okay, so let's look at our first similarity theorem. So two triangles are similar if two corresponding angles are congruent. So if two corresponding angles are congruent. So let's look at what that uh, looks like or what that means in this thing down here, in this example. So consider, uh, complete the similarity statement, that is this, to explain how the two are similar by AA. So we're specifically looking at how they're similar using AA. So let's look at this, some notation first. So we went over this once in class before the quarantine, but let's just go over it again in case we need it. So I just highlighted this little thing over here, this little angle sign and then that one little mark. So the angle sign means it's an angle the mark means the the ones that have the same mark are congruent. So A is congruent to E. So we can write that. Angle A is congruent to angle E. Okay, you might be wondering now, well, what does this mean? Well, angle, and then they have two marks. This one and this one are the same. That means those ones actually are also congruent. So we have angle C being congruent to angle D. Okay, well, what does that tell us about some about the other angles? Well, if angle A and angle C um get added together with angle B, we get 180. So we have this new angle. Well, if this and this are the same as A and C, that means this has to be the same thing. So before we even talk about that specifically, we already see that there are two corresponding angles that are congruent. So by AA, we have angle, angle. So just to be clear, this stands for angle, angle. So we saw that A and C 
are congruent to E and D, which also means that now, notice that I wrote this like this. So A is the is the first one, so E is the first one. C is the last one, so D, which is congruent to, is also the last one here, corresponding. That's what we're looking for. So that means B and F are also related now. So now we have B and F. So that's how we do that. I'm going to do another kind of explanation example thing, have you kind of do that on your own um, when we get to the we do section. So to explain this part real quick, the first thing that we did was find the angle congruence. Congruences, which angles are the same, which ones correspond to each other and are the same. We saw A and E and then C and D. Then the next thing that we did was we match the corresponding angles. Match the corresponding angles with each other. And just by, um, since we don't know for sure, like we didn't actually check, but logically we know, B and F, they correspond to each other because they are the only ones left. They have to be the same because inside a triangle, you have 180 degrees. Okay, moving on. Again, pause if you need to. SSS, triangle similarity. So you're going to be seeing S and A a lot. This stands for side. So S and S is side, A is angle. So two triangles are similar if the lengths of all corresponding side all corresponding sides are proportional. So notice this is not congruent. They don't have to be congruent in order for triangles to be similar. I mean, technically if they are congruent, then they are also considered similar, but we don't need that necessarily. So let's complete the similarity statement. So similar similarity statement is down here. To explain how the two are similar by SSS. So let's look at what sides might be related somehow. Well, let's see, we have eight, 12 and 14. So let's see, eight is the smallest one. What's the smallest one over here? It looks like 48 is the smallest one. 12 is the next smallest. What's the next smallest? Um, 72, I believe. 14 is the biggest. And 84 is the biggest. They're also the only ones left. So let's see. Are they related by uh, proportion? So proportion, remember, when you think of proportion, you're th gonna think multiplication. So let's see, eight times what equals 48? So if you memorize your times tables, you'll know that this is six. If you haven't quite memorized them, you can also do 48 divided by 8. So just 48 divided by 8, and I see what that equals. It's going to be 6, spoiler alert. So let's see. Does 6 work on all of these? So 12 times 6 is what? If you either put that into a calculator or just do it all out, you should get 72. Does that match up here? Yes. Those two are proportional. How about, let's do 14 times six. What does that equal? So if you do 14 times six, um, that gives you 84, yes. So this checks out with this. And we got that from here. So we see that all three sides are proportional. So we see 8 times 6 
equals 48. We see 12 times 6 equals 72. And we also see that 14 times 6 equals 84. So which ones are congruent to which ones? That's the thing. Well, let's look, match the angles real quick. So 48 is across from y. 8 is across from r. Those are congruent. OK, let's see. Um, 84 is across from z. 14 is across from q. So those ones are congruent. So let's look at if we do, um, so y is going to be r. So where is y? It's in the middle. So r is in the middle. All right, z is the last one. And q is congruent to it, so it has to be the last one. So that means x and p correspond also. This order matters, by the way. That tells you literally everything that you need to know about which thing is congruent to which thing. So you know which angle corresponds to which angle. OK, so now let's practice this. This is one of those things that makes a lot more sense when you try it yourself um, rather than when you just get told, oh, this is how it works. It'll also make a little more sense if you do it. And then while you're doing it, um, I like if you don't understand it while you're doing it, you're still thinking about it. That's the thing. And then when I go over it, because of the fact that you thought about it, this will help you understand it better also. OK, so now let's look at this. I'm going to give us, I'm going to put time. I'm going to say five minutes for this, just so that you have some processing time. So let's see. I'm going to assume right now that we are done. So let's look at how these are similar by AA. Whoops, that's supposed to say AA or SSS. I mean, the first one is going to be AA anyway. So I guess that worked out. So let's see. Well, we have B and D being corresponding. So B is the second one. D is going to be the second one also. I'm just going to underline it like that. Well, do we know anything else that's congruent? So if you're looking at this, you might be like, OK, what in the world might be congruent there? But if you remember, there's a thing that we did called the vertical angles. So if you looked at this closely enough, you would have remembered, oh, yeah, we did that thing before. And maybe that. And you would be correct. they are congruent. So we have B, C, we have D, C. So that means C is going to become that third one there also. So if those two are congruent, that means that A and E are also congruent. So we have E there. So vertical angles. So we know that angle BCA is congruent to angle DCE. All right, great. So we have that one. Now let's look at this next one. I'm going to also give us five minutes to kind of look at this, process it. And same instructions. I'm going to wait on this a little bit. Um, and then assume, yeah, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you already paused the video and did the problem yourself. So we're going to move on three, two, one, zero. So now let's look at this. In here, it might be a little bit hard to figure out like what's what yet, but let's try to see. Well, compare the sides. You can also write them down like this. 
So 4 is less than 5 is less than 7. Okay, and then we have 24 is less than 30 is less than 42. Let's see, what might be happening here? Well, let's see, 4 to 24, how do we get that? We can multiply by 6. Oh, that's the same as the last one. I didn't actually intend for that to be the same. So you're not always going to multiply by 6. In this case, yeah. So 4 times 6 is 24. Let's see. Is that, 20, is that 30? 5 times 6? Yes. 7 times 6, is that 42? Yes. So we see that for this, that checks out if we just multiply by 6. And then if we look at the 5 and the 30, that checks out. If we look at 7 and 42, if we multiply by 6, it checks out for both of those also. Now let's match the angles. So we're going to do HXL. So H, that's across from 24, which is the smallest angle. So here, let's go across. That means W is the first one. All right, so X is over here. What's across from that? 42. So that's the biggest one. Let's look for the biggest one here. That's 7. Across from that is S. And then the, the last one that is left is R, I believe. Yeah, so we can do it like that. And we have this. All right. Now we're going to do another one here. So this one is going to take a little bit of thinking. You have to remember what an equilateral triangle is. So equi, equi, however you want to pronounce it, means equal. Lateral means side. So all sides are equal. So I'm going to give us, again, time is five minutes to work on this. And I'm going to move on now. So let's look at what we have here. Um, so we already have something here that A is congruent to AD and DC. That's already given that that's congruent. So we know that AD is congruent to AC. Okay, so what do we know about this, BD? Well, that's literally the same thing itself, right? BD is congruent to BD. How about this? Are those the same? Well, it's an equilateral triangle. So this side and this side actually are the same. So that's congruent to that. So that means AB is congruent to BC. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, quick thing, I meant for that to be ABD. I don't know why I wrote ABC. That's a D. ABD. Okay, so let's look at this. We're basically looking at two triangles. This one and the white one that's left here. Actually, I'll just use blue to make it clear that it's a different one. So we have two triangles there. We're trying to see are they congruent? Um, I'm not congruent, uh, similar. Well, it looks like well, we have three sides that are actually congruent. So technically they are proportional by times one. So that means yes, they are. This is similar. So similar by SSS with a proportionality of one. 
So now let's actually write the little thing over here. What goes with what? So A, the side that's across from that is this. So now let's do that. So that'll be our A side. So we're going to have C. And then, okay, what's B? That's up here. So the one across from B is this. So, um, I believe B should be the same in both cases. So C, B, so A, B, D. So now we're going down and we're gonna get D right there. So notice that they're actually the same. It's just A and C were different. So this is one of those things where it's gonna be a lot um, like, you got to think about it. You have to draw, you have to think about it. It's helpful to annotate these things also. Okay, so again, pause if you need to, and I'm gonna scroll down over to here. So I have a question for you all. Are all equilateral triangles similar to each other? So if I have one equilateral triangle and I draw another equilateral triangle, are those similar? Does it matter what the dimensions are? So, answer those and explain it twice. The first time explain using AA. The second explain using SSS. Alright, see y'all later.